All right, so Dr. Springer can't be with us today, so we went ahead and recorded a wildlife sounds from the forest just for you all. And uh, we used to do this, Matt and I, we would do this um, for our radio show, which was From the Woods, Kentucky. And we thought maybe we might just bring it on to From the Woods today to kind of add a little something to it. We thought it was, a, we really loved this segment when we did it on From the Woods, Kentucky. Um, so we thought we'd bring it here and that way you can actually see pictures. And so it might be a little added bonus to it. Definitely opens an entire new avenue of uh, excitement, per se. It does. So let's see. What's our new wildlife sound from the forest today, then? Well, I got one that is a pretty uh, common sound I'm hearing, especially as I walk out my back door uh, over the last two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one that, you know, is pretty strongly associated with forests in the fall uh, and through, in, through into winter and uh, or even early spring. So if right. you're ready, I've got yeah, it. For let's go you. ahead and listen to that. Now, some of you probably already know what this is, I'm guessing. Right. right I would assume, but I think but you I've have got... one more sound though for us, maybe, right? I do. I have another one that goes with it. And that one's usually paired with when you walk up to it and it's sounding an alarm call. I think a lot of people might actually know what that sound is or have heard it. I know you hear it a lot on campus because <laughs> yeah. you're getting too close to, to these, these little critter, critters. So uh, show everybody what it is. Sure. So this one is one of our more common wildlife uh, in the state of Kentucky. Or our most com probably our mo one of our most common uh, mammals that people see and interact with, uh, especially those who feed birds because um, these are constant visitors. It's our, our gray squirrel, uh, a common feature through backyards and forests and, uh, and on campus at UK. Yeah. So um, one of the things, I got a neat little story for you, and I, I know that's how we usually um, did the show on the radio, is I had something to go along with this, to, with the facts. And um, right. so the noise, that initial noise you heard is actually the squirrel um, cracking that nut there, chewing on the nut. Um, and it's working its way through that outer husk, and that's the actual sound with those giant teeth uh, that they have, those front um, incisors that are ever growing uh, because they're rodents. That's what enables them to work through the, that hard acorn, that hard walnut to get to that food, uh, and which really is a staple of their diet through the winter and the fall. Do they eat other things as well, other than nuts? Well, we got a few things, right? So it's Gray squirrel is actually one of our three named squirrels, and primarily they consume hard mast and soft mast. Explain and mast. <laughs> and, and so mast is basically the fruiting body of a tree or a bush, right? So an acorn is hard mast or hickory nut or walnut or beech nut. And a soft mast, a good example of that would be something like blackberries or uh, grapes, uh, fleshy outside instead of that hard outside. So that's the main difference. Um, now, these guys often get in trouble, too, uh, in many ways, uh, especially if you have a garden uh, or those yeah. bird feeders. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, they also will get into attics and, um, and into people's roofs and do some damage. Uh, mm -hmm. So they have a downside. Um, uh, you know, those teeth do not just cut through nuts. Uh, they will go through uh, wood siding. And, oh, and my. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they, when they're ever growing, they need to keep them from growing too far, so they have to chew. Oh, I see. So that it's a constant thing. They just grow continuously, the teeth? Yeah, it, it's a continuous growth. And that's really evolved so that they can, you know, if you think about it, like us, if we bite a nut and break that tooth, we don't get another one. Right. And thankfully, we eat a lot of other food where if you had nothing but acorns to eat for your entire life, mm. you better hope that that tooth comes back. Uh, so... They're, they're, you know, they're, they're designed to uh, handle those acorns and walnuts and everything else, uh, those hard mass um, that are produced in, in Kentucky and in, in much of the uh, forests throughout the world. So they store up acorns, right, over, for over the winter? Oh, they do, yes. Yeah. So um, they're kind of funny in that um, they have, you know, uh, they, they, they have this behavior where they will store the nuts and hide them. Um, it's not, you know, some people say that they remember where every nut is. And that's not necessarily true. They do use a strategy where it's kind of, they clump them so they know where to look for them mm -hmm. and their nose is very good. So as long as they get close to them, they'll be able to find it. Okay. Um, now we get into some funny social sides of, of animals and, um, 
you know, squirrels are not often found uh, in singles. There's usually a bunch of squirrels, right? Mm -hmm. And all of them are trying to hide nuts. Oh. And they are not very nice to each other about it. So one squirrel will watch another squirrel bury a nut and then immediately run over and steal that nut and take it to its spot to hide it. Oh my. <laughs> now, the funny thing is that squirrels know this is going on. So there's this entire strategy going on where sometimes they'll actually bury the nut. Other times they'll actually hide it as they dig and not put it in there. They'll just cover it up and run away with the nut and put it somewhere else while that squirrel is looking to steal the nut. So it's, it's a... Um, a very uh, interesting game of cat and mouse. Uh, except it's like that nutshell nuts. game, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just give They're experts. Up, move it around. <laughs> um, so that's one of the things. And they they have all kinds of interesting behaviors. Uh, there's actually citizen science projects looking at um, squirrels and where they're found and how they interact with people and mm -hmm. other squirrels, um, especially uh, the other species of squirrels, because it's not just gray squirrels that are found in, in uh, urban areas. Uh, we've got the fox squirrel. We have the flying squirrel. Uh, we would have the southern flying squirrel here. Wow. So there's a bunch of them out there. And um, surprisingly, um, one of the things that we haven't got to here on facts is these guys are long lived, um, you know, in terms of being a very you know, they're a prey item. So uh, we have things like hawks and owls and uh, bobcats this is one of their main diet uh, items. They live about six years uh, mm -hmm. in the wild. That first year, if they get through that first year, usually they'll live uh, several years after that. Um, it, a lot of them don't make it through that first year. Uh, gotcha. But the old, oldest occurring squirrel is upwards of 12 years in the wild. 12 years old. Oh, my goodness. 12 years old and 20 years in captivity. 20? They can live a long time. Can you have these as pets then? Did somebody have it as a pet? Uh, uh, you can't have it as a pet. I think that was probably a zoo. Oh, uh, I see. Um, yeah, so, but I have heard people having them as pets, and that's really not recommended. Right. Uh, they are a wild animal and, and um, can cause problems associated with it. Uh, thankfully, they don't carry a lot of diseases, but they do have a few. Um, and then really it, the problem is that we don't have the right habitat to, to contain them um, in a... a you know, in a, in a house, um, they'll get into those troubles with chewing and everything else and cause a little more damage. Um, so trying to get through a few more facts here. I know we're, we're cutting on time. So uh, these guys reproduce twice a year, once in spring, once in fall, um, the adults anyway. And uh, that actually is what causes the hunt hunting season for squirrels to be broken up because uh, there's a lot of squirrels and they reproduce fairly quick as rodents. So they're um, pretty traditional hunting um, game animal and, uh, you know, a staple for a lot of uh, folks uh, diet, uh, especially the early settlers. And how many children do they have? <laughs> Usually um, have about three or four in a litter. Okay. Uh, and, you know, so uh, pretty high survival rate if, if uh, there's ample food around. And, you know, a lot of times we'll see them uh, build nests out of the leaf bundles and you'll look up in the tree and you'll see that big clog of leaves there in the picture. Uh, but they'll also use tree cavities quite a bit oh. or cavities in your house uh, as a place to uh, have those litters uh, or sleep away the winter. Uh, and these guys don't hibernate. They go through what's called torpor. And what's that? So torpor is basically a cycle of deep sleep. Um, where these animals uh, will go in, their, their metabolism slows down, heart rate, breathing slows down, and then two or three weeks later, it kind of starts picking up, and they'll actually wake up and get out uh, and walk around. Uh, so it's a way for them to make it, if they have a really bad um, cold streak or snowstorm, they can slow themselves down to get through that and save as much of their energy as possible. Oh. Uh, but then they can wake back up. Because if you think about it, when we walk through the woods in the winter, you're seeing squirrels running around because there's still acorns on the ground, and right. there's food out there that they can have. So it's just a, a way for them to, to make it through the worst parts. And really, they don't go into that very often for that long. It's usually a much shorter period. Hmm. It's very interesting. So I think that's all I have on squirrels. So unless you have some more questions, uh, thank you. And hopefully, we'll see how this goes forward uh, in the future on this new programming instead of the radio. Yeah. Uh, no, I think this will be good to do one at least once a month to get people to hear a wildlife sound. And uh, I know the people that have wanted it on the radio, they'll, they'll be glad to hear it again. So um, uh, thank you so much for uh, doing this today for us. No problem. I always enjoy it. Now you just raised the bar and made it harder. Now I got to get videos. And more there you pictures. go. <laughs> so that's the only downside. All right. All right. You guys have a wonderful rest of the day.